Hello my dear young doctors, welcome to Medico Mello. Today we are going to discuss the topic hemiplegia. What is plegia? Plegia means a complete or near complete paralysis. What is paralysis? Paralysis is weakness or partial paralysis. So what does mean by hemiplegia? It is the paralysis of one half of the body that is face, arms, legs but not the trunk. Why? The trunk is exempted as it is having a bilateral innervation. Diagnosis of the hemiplegia case. We have to keep her four things in our mind. We have to find neurological reason. Secondly, the anatomical description. Thirdly, the pathological cause. And fourth, the etiology. So regarding the neurological one, we have to find out whether it is a human palsy or element palsy. UMN means upper motor neuron whereas the element means lower motor neuron with the side to be specified. Let's see what is this UMN and element palsy. Regarding this UMN palsy we can see a clasp knife spasticity which is the hypertonia whereas in element palsy it is flaccidity causing hypotonia. Regarding the reflexes in UMN palsy the superficial reflexes are reduced or absent whereas the deep reflexes are brisk or exaggerated. In case of element palsy, both the superficial and the deep reflexes are lost. Regarding the plantar response, there is extensor. In case of element palsy, the plantar reflex is flexor. This is positive plantar reflexes, Babinski sign. Regarding the wasting of the muscles, there is minimal wasting in human palsy, whereas wasting and atrophy of the muscle is severe in element palsy. In human palsy, muscle groups are affected, whereas in element palsy, individual muscles are affected. And from these features, we have to classify whether it is a human palsy or an element palsy. Regarding the reflexes, we have to know which are the superficial reflexes and which are the deep reflexes. The superficial reflexes are corneal reflex, conjunctival reflex, palatal reflex and pharyngeal reflexes, abdominal reflex, anal reflex, plantar reflex and bulbocavernous reflex. The plantar reflex are very important to diagnose the human palsy. If the plantar response is extensor, it means the Babinski sign is positive. Deep reflexes are jojic reflex, biceps reflex, supinator, triceps, knee jerk and angle jerk. And these deep reflexes are very important to localize the site of the lesion. The second one we have to think about the anatomical region. First do the cranial nerve examination. If there is no cranial nerve involved then there are two possibilities. Mainly, the lesion is below the medulla, that is the brainstem, and above the C5. Why there is above the C5? If below the C5, then the upper limbs are spared, and that won't be a hemiplegia. And if it is above the medulla or in the brainstem, then there will be any one of the cranial nerve involved in the lesion. But here, there is no cranial nerve involved. And there, the second possibility is the lesion being at the cortex. But there will be clinical features depending on the site of the cortex, like a differential hemiplegia. That we will be dealing later. The second possibility in cranial nerve examination is if any cranial nerve is involved other than facial nerve. The possibility is the lesion in the brainstem at the site of its cranial nerve nuclei. The third possibility is simply the facial nerve involvement only. Then there are two possibilities. Most commonly the lesion is above the brainstem and most commonly the, at the internal capsule. The second possibility is the lesion in the pons at the facial nuclei level. But it will be a element facial palsy. That we have to see why why this facial nuclei is so special. All other cranial nerves have got bilateral innervation from both sides of the brain. If there is a lesion at any side of the brain then due to the innervation from the opposite half of the brain that cranial nerve is not affected. But that's not the case in the facial nuclei. Why? The facial nuclei has got two halves the dorsal part and the ventral part. 
The dorsal part, which is the upper part, has got innervation from both half of the brain. Whereas the ventral part has got innervation from only single half of the brain and that even from the opposite side. And this dorsal part of the nuclei innervates the upper two thirds of the face. Whereas the lower ventral part of the nuclei innervates the lower one third of the face. From this figure we can diagnose the lesion. If there is a lesion in this part, let me say in the right side, then innervation to the left facial nuclei is affected. And one more thing, the innervation to the same side upper part of the facial nuclei is also affected. But taking this left sided facial nuclei as the upper part is also getting the innervation from the same side of the brain, the upper part of the nuclei is not affected. But as this lower part of the facial nuclei is getting the innervation from only one half of the brain and that even being cut then this lower part of the facial nuclei is affected and thus the region supplied by that lower part of the facial nuclei that is the same side lower one third of the face is affected and that is known as the human facial palsy so the right side of lesion causes the left sided lower one third facial palsy that is the human facial palsy and one more thing the pyramidal tracts to the opposite side of the body is passing via the region so that is also being cut and due to that it causes this hemiplegia in the left side of the body as a whole any lesion above the seventh nuclei causes the human facial palsy in the opposite side and the hemiplegia in the same side of the face and that is known as the ipsilateral hemiplegia which means lesion in the right side above the seventh nuclei causes the left sided facial human palsy that is left sided lower one third of the facial palsy and left sided hemiplegia and that is the typical ipsilateral hemiplegia and this is why facial palsy is alone seen with hemiplegia whereas other cranial nerves are spared due to their bilateral innervation. Let me take another possibility. What about the lesion in the facial nerve that is in the lower part of the pons? So if there is any nuclei of the cranial nerve being affected or even the lower part of the nuclei, the root of the nerve or even that cranial nerve along its path are affected then that will become an element palsy. So if there is a lesion in the facial nuclei then that causes the element facial palsy which means the whole half of that side of the face is affected and as the pyramidal tract to the opposite side of the body is also being cut it causes the opposite side hemiplegia and this is known as the contralateral hemiplegia. And this is seen in any case of the cranial nerve nuclei is being cut. That causes the same side cranial nerve palsy which is the element palsy with the opposite side hemiplegia and that also known as the contralateral hemiplegia. Next about the lesion. If there is an lesion then at the level of the lesion all the nerves and the region supplied by that nerve will be having the element features. Whereas above the level of the lesion everything is normal but below the level of the lesion all the nerves, the body parts and the region will be having the features of the human palsy. Let me say with an example this is midbrain, this is pons and this is medulla and this is the facial nuclei located in the lower part of the pons. If there is a lesion in the level of the seventh cranial nerve nuclei then for this cranial nerve nuclei and for this facial nerve it is an element palsy whereas the region the nerves the cranial nuclei above this lesion are normal whereas the nerves the cranial nuclei below the level of the lesion will be having effects of the human palsy why it is upper motor neuron palsy 
according to these cranial nerves according to these parts the lesion is above upper to it so that causes the upper motor neuron palsies another example here there is biceps there is supinator and the triceps reflexes the biceps is supplied by the c5 the supinator by the c6 and the triceps by the c7 so assume a lesion in the c6 that is the supinator reflex is lost why at the level of the lesion it is an element palsy so according to the element palsy there is loss of both superficial as well as the deep reflex and hence we see there is loss of supinator reflex regarding the biceps as the c5 is above the c6 that is the c5 is above the level of the lesion the biceps reflex is normal why above the level of the lesion we have seen that everything is normal but below the level there is human palsy which means the triceps reflex is exaggerated in under human palsy all the superficial reflexes are lost or diminished whereas the deep reflexes are exaggerated or brisk and hence the c7 level is the human and all the levels coming under this lesion that is c7 c8 and so on everything are affected as human lesion and keep this example in mind and this is the pathway of the pyramidal tract from the cortex all the nerves come and join the internal capsule as corona radiata at the internal capsule via the posterior limb of the internal capsule as a compact closely packed bundle the pyramidal tract descends down via the midbrain pons and medulla towards the end of the medulla it crosses to the opposite side and known as the motor decussation and supplies the opposite part of the body and in the midbrain we can see there are two cranial nerves there are two cranial nuclei the third nuclei as well as the fourth cranial nerve nuclei in the pons there are three cranial nerve nuclei the fifth trigeminal the sixth abducens and the seventh facial cranial nerve nuclei in the medulla the eighth one the ninth the tenth and the eleventh towards the end there is twelfth also we have seen that if there is no cranial nerve involved there are two possibilities and one being the lesion in the cortex with clinical features depending on the site of the lesion in the cortex which means if there is a lesion in the cortex and the region represented in the site of the lesion is affected for example if there is a lesion in the representation of the hand in the cortex then there is paralysis in the hands only all other areas are not affected and they are normal so the clinical features are depending on the site of the lesion in the cortex and what is being represented there other features are there can be seizures there can be signs of raised intracranial tension like headache vomiting disorientation there will be speech difficulty known as aphasia and the power of the upper limb won't be equal to the lower limb which means there is differential hemiplegia what about the lesion at the internal capsule we have seen that all the fibers are coming together and going as a bundle which is closely and tightly packed via the posterior limb of the internal capsule any lesion in this region causes weakness of all parts of the body equally that is upper limbs and the lower limbs are equally affected as their nerves are lying close to each other the most common cause of the lesion in the posterior limb is the middle cerebral artery ischemia and that we are seeing here the weakness of the upper limb is equal to the lower limb why because their nerves are passing close to each other via the posterior limb of the internal capsule so even if it is a small lesion both the fibers of the upper limb and the lower limb are affected equally and there won't be any speech difficulty there won't be any convulsions as in case of a cortex lesion and there will be only a seventh nerve involvement why all other cranial nuclei are having bilateral innervation and any lesion in the one side of the brain 
is compensated by the innervation from the other half of the brain and all other cranial nerves are not affected. In case of the midbrain, they are involved in the eye movement. So any lesion causes the loss of eye movement and along with that there is seventh nerve human palsy that we have discussed before and opposite side hemiplegia with other cranial nerves being normal. What about the lesion in the pons? It affects the fifth, sixth and the seventh nuclei. Based on the level of the lesion on the nuclei, the clinical features differs. Other cranial nerves are normal if the lesion is below the seventh nuclei. But if the lesion is above the seventh nuclei, there is human facial palsy and with opposite side hemiplegia. If the lesion is at the medulla, then all the four nerves are being affected. All these nerves are supplying the muscles of the pharynx and the larynx and that causes the dysphagia, dysphonia, dysarthria which is speech difficulty and opposite sided hemiplegia. We have discussed that if there is no cranial nerve involved, there can be two possibilities. One, the lesion being in the cortex and the other one is the lesion is between the medulla and the C5. Which are the levels? It can be at the craniovertebral junction, it can be at the C2, it can be C4 and C5 and it can be C6. First of all, if the lesion is the craniovertebral junction, then we have to look at the fields triad, which are short neck, low set hairline, restriction of the neck movement. If these are present, there is confirmed fields triad. If so, we can suspect the craniovertebral anomaly can be clipper field anomalies, Arnold Chiari syndrome, atlanto axial dislocation and occipitalization of the atlas. And these results in hemiplegia without affecting any of the cranial nerve as it is lying below this level of the brainstem. The second one if the lesion at the C2 level. At the C2 level there is spinal segment of the trigeminal nuclei and that even representing the ophthalmic division. So if there is a lesion, then the ophthalmic division of this trigeminal nerve resulting loss of sensation over the forehead. And thirdly, if there is a loss of shoulder shrugging, if there is loss of trapezius reflex, and if the stenocleidomastoids are affected, that is, the patient cannot move or turn his head to the left or right or forward, then we have to suspect lesion in the level of the spinal accessory nuclei that is lesion at the C4 and C5. If there is a lesion at the C6 then there is wasting of the brachioradialis muscle only along with the human features towards the lower part that is other reflexes are exaggerated. We have finished the anatomy. Thirdly the pathology. Mostly it will be an acute event. If it is an acute event we have to suspect trauma cerebrovascular attack, acute infections like meningitis and encephalitis. Chronic event can be like tumors growing in the cortex. Regarding the CVA, that is the cerebrovascular attacks, it can be an ischemic event or a hemorrhagic event. The ischemic events can be embolic or thrombotic. We have to classify these events. If it is a hemorrhagic event, there will be severe headache and which is of sudden onset and it progresses rapidly. If it is an embolic event, it is of an abrupt onset and develops in seconds. Regarding the thrombotic event, it develops in minutes, even in hours and there is stroke in evolution. And finally, the etiology. If it is an embolic event, it can be a cardiac cause or a non-cardiac cause. Cardiac causes can be mitral stenosis, subacute bacterial endocarditis or even atrial fibrillation. Non-cardiac causes can be air or fat embolisms. Hemorrhagic events can be due to an aneurysm rupture or due to chronic systemic hypertension. Thrombotic events can be due to hyperlipidemia, diabetes mellitus, etc. And hence, we come to the diagnosis and we have to write the diagnosis as right sided hemiplegia with human palsy and that is the neurological reason with the lesion at the left internal capsule and that is the anatomical region.
embolic event in the region of the middle cerebral artery most commonly that defines a pathological event and the etiology as cardiac causes mitral stenosis or atrial fibrillation etc and this is how we come to the diagnosis of the hemiplegia case next few words about the common brainstem syndromes these brainstem syndromes causes the contralateral hemiplegia that is depending on the site of the lesion that cranial nerve is having the endomen palsy with the opposite side hemiplegia of the body first of all the weber syndrome with the lesion in the midbrain it causes the third cranial nerve palsy at one side which is an element type and that opposite sided hemiplegia known as the crossed hemiplegia second one the millard gubler syndrome which is the lesion at the pons causing sixth cranial nerve element palsy with the opposite side hemiplegia again crossed hemiplegia and finally the avalus syndrome with the lesion in the medulla causing the 10th cranial nerve element palsy with the opposite side hemiplegia so thus we come to the conclusion that any lesion in the brainstem will result in crossed hemiplegia any lesion above the brainstem comes under ipsilateral hemiplegia and that's the end of our topic keep this in mind you become successful by helping others to become successful this is your medical mallu please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching this video